Okay, we are live. Oh. Welcome everybody to Love Speaks Love. Um, and today um, I'm live with Sahara Celestial. So I'm Denise, your host. And um, just opening Facebook. Hang on a second. Just check we're live on there. Yep. Yeah. So Love Speaks Love is a platform um, to share wisdom, experiences, possibly some ceremony. Um, and Zahara Celestial has been a guest before. She is a very dear friend. And one of the reasons, aside from just having her on here, um, that we, are, we were intending to go live before Monday anyway, because we are doing a little Zoom, um, a little Zoom call on Monday. So we're going to share some of the details of that. Um, but welcome, Zahara Celestial. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Denise Chadwick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think yeah. I ever really say Zahara on, on its own. I think I always say Zahara Celestial. Yeah, I suppose it does go together. <laughs> mm. It was it was funny. Um, when I, I I don't think I mentioned that my the the name change when I uh, was on before, because um, I knew I was going to get another name, and then I then I got it. It just came. It popped in, and I'm like, is that does that exist? Is that a word that do people are people called Zahara? Um, we all know Celestial. <laughs> Um, and then I looked it up on Google and people do call themselves Sahara and it means flowering in light. And um, and I was resistant about using it because I think, oh, it seems like really like pretentious and I'm now Sahara Celestial. I thought oh, I can't be doing with it. So I, I, I resisted it. And then the guidance came through. It was, it's not for you. It's so you resonate in that vibration for everybody. So it was not your name <laughs> in a way. Um, and then I was happy. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> um, and also it, it really connects with um, the flower of life. Mm. Um, so flowering in light and flower of life, it, it feels um, very resonant. So yeah, so um, that's, I thought it was important <laughs> to share that uh, bit of info. Um, Is it just, feeling more comfortable? It is because I'm I'm getting used to people saying that now, um, and uh, yes, yeah, so I've had quite a few name changes. I was um, I got a long name <laughs> christened Elizabeth Jane Dale Rudwick, um, mm -hmm. and then my mother actually called me Jane, so I was called Jane throughout my childhood, mm -hmm. and then I went to um, to Liz. And I didn't like that. Then, then I expanded the whole thing to the to Elizabeth, and now I got this. So, um, yeah, we all go through different um, transformations. Um, one me a medium once said to me out the blue, um, uh, I was we were traveling in a car together, and and I changed, and I'd been using Elizabeth for some time, and she said, um, "Your grandmother." Or was it your mother? I think they're both, they're not happy with your changing your name. <laughs> um, and I'm like, and I went back tough. <laughs> <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> um, so I don't so, um, so that was um I don't know about four years ago or something. <laughs> so um yeah, hopefully they they um they like it or not. <laughs> It was a funny experience to get um, um, this medium to say that. But anyway, so there we go. I think I'm going to do the little visualisation because um, I usually start around this. Because Love Speaks Love is a heart-centred conversation um, and it's about us being love and, and speaking from the heart, um, so I usually I usually start with um, just a, a short visualization, which is really just to <clears throat> put us in our heart space and connect our hearts, connect 
Zahara and my heart, but also connect us to those watching now, those connect, uh, connect us to those watching on the replay or on YouTube. Um, so if you're in a position to do so, I invite you to close your eyes. Obviously not if you're driving or operating heavy machinery, but trusting that you're in a position to do so and it feels comfortable. So if you'd like to just take a few long and slow deep breaths. <sighs> breathing in love, breathing out gratitude. Breathing in love, Breathing out gratitude. <clears throat> and bringing our awareness to our heart space in the center of our chest. This is our energetic heart. The seat of our crystalline diamond octahedron heart. And as we continue to breathe in love, and on your out breath, breathe out anything you wish to, any old energy you wish to let go of, or gratitude, or love. And just visualizing all of our hearts connecting together. And as people watching are from all around the globe, visualizing a beautiful web of golden light, connecting all of our hearts. And that golden web of light is all the way around Gaia, all the way around the earth. And that web of light is going down into the earth all the way to the crystalline diamond heart of Gaia. And as we connect our hearts to Gaia, feeling her love and her recognition of all of us and feeling her gratitude for all of us, and sending love from our hearts to the heart of the sun, to the heart of creator source energy, and to the heart of the moon. And perhaps now just taking the opportunity to say to our own hearts, I love you. I love you. I love you. And knowing that the energy from this, the resonance from this will go to all hearts on the planet. So taking a few more long and slow deep breaths. And still with our awareness in our heart space, just moving our bodies, wiggling fingers and toes and opening our eyes when we're ready. And maybe taking a sip of water. Beautiful. So hard to open my eyes at the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. oh. So, if you want an introduction to Zahara, you can watch the first show, which you can find on YouTube. My YouTube channel is Inner Peace with Denise. 
Um, and you introduced yourself in a beautiful, unique way. I was wondering if this time you wanted to introduce yourself in interpretive dance. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> you create you you. What would the, you created a beautiful sound when I asked you that last time? Okay. Do you remember? <laughs> yes, I think <laughs> it was a very it was a very novel. Um, Mm. a novel unique unique way to introduce yourself and, and kind of did very very nicely oh thank you um so yeah I'm going to skip the introductions yeah. and I wondered if you wanted to share at all about the current energies and how how you're finding the energies that are coming through on the planet at the moment oh yes big um 2019 was a gathering of many of our soul parts um, individually and collectively us gathering and within that releasing a lot and I thought this human aspect of me ego part thought oh I've, I've done all that now <laughs> uh, then 2020 boom even deeper um it's really been intense I've had um, a lot of physical clearing a lot of physical pain uh waking up several times in the night with profound dreams um with memories coming up which i can't even remember now <laughs> from from this lifetime um and like you know sort of light bulb moments of oh wow um so it feels we're really we're still <laughs> the intensity of clearing and releasing that's um, and I've heard others saying that and other light workers who are not used to of, of revisiting things or revisiting things even so there's that um, and I had a um, I don't always <laughs> make connections because I'm so immersed in wherever I am that's very human but I had the planet Saturn talking to me and which was um, enormous <laughs> because it's a planet <laughs> and I'm not used to um, working with astrology. It doesn't fit in my um, consciousness. It doesn't sit in my brain. The information I go, oh, wow, that's amazing. And it just goes through me. And I'm like, I can't kind of keep hold of it. I know other people do and I, I'm, I think it's amazing. It just, it just goes, woo. And so I thought, oh, well, I, just don't, I just don't do planets, whatever that means. And then suddenly I get a planet talking to me um, and then there was the, you know, with all the rings and then I could see all the, the um, galactic beings and, um, and I also had the information that we were ending a seven year cycle. Well, I didn't know any the other day before yesterday. I was like, I'm like, oh, Saturn returns seven years. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and so Saturn's been talking to me again. Um, so with that, you know, we're, we're in a collect. So I've had, I, I wasn't, connecting those two things <laughs> so um there's been um saturn also uh, is very much linked with the masculine aspect so there's a clearing of an um and a, a re embrace there's a clearing of the distortion of the of the divine masculine and and then there's a, a reawakening of that with a crystalline energy so there's a lot of us probably been working with that physically in our left and right sides or left and right side of our brain and in our relationships with one another and ourselves um and so that's been very much so Saturn also <laughs> I did this drawing I had a dream which I woke up with all this like um uh, light language codes which I've had twice this week um and I did the drawing and it was the sun it was this great big sun with this these these symbols and I did the symbols and then I looked at the symbols again after I'd done them. And it's like, this is sun, but it's got the, the symbol of Saturn. <laughs> mm. And I'm like, so Saturn is our sun? What? Um, and then I did a, another, and then another a Google. It's like, there's all these YouTubes about um, and the ancient civilizations who did the symbol of Saturn for the sun. I haven't looked at them yet. But it's like, oh, so um, there's there's something going on there um, about um, 
and that I haven't again I, I don't know yet I, I I wanted to get to be with this information how it came to me rather than go straight to the mm. an external source and get it so um I um so that's been in my um area so um I think that's all pushing us because we're in this an ending a completion of a chapter collectively and of course we all have our own individual time frames and timelines as well so um yes so that's that <laughs> okay so that's from 2000 and, ah interesting so the end of 2012 um is just over seven years ago so that presumably is is that that's that's the link with that cycle presumably yeah 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 a lot of people woke had a big ma ma major mm. awakenings then and that includes me well, I had this whole galactic universe dimension that came in after I went on this vision quest so that so yeah these they're all slotting in 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 my own my own fractal experience I'm I'm like mm -hmm. oh what what, what this but because it's so vast it takes the time it takes and I think that's why I wanted to honor my process I think so often we've got so much information out there we can quite easily go oh, well I'll go there and read up on this and you know and it, it and it will be valid and and um and that's um very much how I informs how I work with people because it's like well we we're I don't want to give everything to somebody and take away them finding themselves, but yeah. So, but but there's a relationship there, and we do give and take. We do receive and give information. So it's it's not. I won't say anything because I've been doing these um, sounding readings um, twice a month, and mm. um, and I had to go through a real process with that um, because. I can tune in and I can I can I can sense if someone's from a star sea place <laughs> they have a specific energies and <clears throat> um and I think well that can be a gift it can unlock something for somebody but then I don't want to kind of go blah 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 with with all the information mm. so um anyway I'm totally distracted so I think that's how <clears throat> that's how the big <laughs> the big ascended beings whether they're planets or angelic or galactic or, ange or whoever's <laughs> they don't want to tell us everything mm. and I think um, sometimes um, um, we can get frustrated like why are my guides not talking to me it's like well I think if they told us everything well I think if the guides told me everything I wouldn't be exploring and learning and also I might freak out. <laughs> I think we might all freak out, go, what the fuck? <laughs> um, I'm gonna go in a spaceship to, um, next week, <laughs> or whatever it is. So I think we're not meant to know everything and maybe mm. they don't know everything anyway. I kind of getting a sense that we're in this, we're all kind of getting into a space where we're doing it all together now. We're, we're becoming sort of, peers with in a way along with being human <laughs> um anyway so i've gone all over the place there but yes <laughs> that was an awesome share thank you <clears throat> <clears throat> that was really interesting about um about saturn and do you feel that was linked to what we're doing on monday yeah um because the the, the 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 information about saturn came with because the whole dream i was in a <laughs> sorry i don't know why i find this is funny i just have my <laughs> own joke privately in front of everyone um, um i was in a spaceship in the dream that's what i thought was funny and um i was looking out this big window onto the moon and there were all these lakes on the moon um and then it ended with this massive the being really close up to the sun with and then all these symbols um, so it, it, it connects with me because I've been connecting with Gaia, with the sun and the moon and Saturn. There's some connection for me with those of the, those are the, 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 who I've been working with. Um, and the moon, 
I got the information, I don't know, six months ago or something that there'd been all, the, and I, I've had resistance and it's, it's coming up more now when I'm sort of hearing other people about the um, negative intervention mm -hmm. um, with Gaia and humans. And I don't kind of like to go to in that at all, but I was given the information that the moon was interfered with and there was all these kind of building structures, technologies, and that had been cleared. Um, so, and I think, that, and then seeing that all these galactic um, spaceship beings were all gathering around Saturn I haven't got all the um, answers yet, um, but there is something going on here. Um, there is a gathering. <laughs> um, not that we're all going to go off in spaceships, but there, there's something happening, um, and I, I'm not quite sure all, all of it. Um, and it's all aligning with 2020. Saturn, um, yes, and the um, so yeah, I'm not. I haven't got. I've just been getting very like powerful, vivid dreams, and then then I'll get like a bit of information. Um, I'll feel what will happen is like if if you know you have the experience of a guide coming into your space. Mm -hmm. I've only got a planet. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like oh my god so um it, it, it's i think it's just taking me a little time to adjust um <laughs> um and the, and they and like guy has a voice you know that, that, that they all um have a voice mm. so and then i've been getting information there's a, a second son and I, I don't know what to do about that, <laughs> but it keeps, it's getting more and more stronger, whether that, you know, it's another higher dimensional aspect of the sun. But then when I tuned in, to, it just came out of the blue when I was walking, I think it was last year or year before the temple of the sun and the whole dimension. And it was like, I was walking outside and it was like, wow. Um, I think, I don't know, in my experience, I get snippets when they're big, <laughs> they're big enough but I'll get like a window suddenly open. And I'm like, wow. And then it will be closed. And then I think that um, I'm fed like little bits, yeah. <laughs> but in a bit, they they hold a lot of information. So. Um, and it can take a while. I think it's, it's like we're given a, a packet of information that, that we can't really grasp. Like we've got all the information, but the information's kind of like dripped into our awareness or our consciousness slowly. Um, because it would have to be, because it's it can be too much as well. Yes, because um, it has to come through all the dimensions. Sorry, Angel, I'm sorry, Angel. It, 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 so it's vast, <laughs> and then it, it gets denser and denser as it comes to then settle yeah. in here. And you'll know that as well, because you, you, you're channeling a lot. Mm -hmm. So you can get like, oh, wow, and then you have to wait for it to kind of... And then we yeah. interpret. We are interpret interpreters. Um, it's not literal yeah yeah and of course we we can't help but interpret through our filters as well you know how can we not really um yeah i'm glad you i'm glad you've touched on on that regarding the moon um i really enjoyed what franco de, de nicola said about the moon so he talks about the earth the distorted matrix being an inverted matrix uh -huh. that the natural matrix of the earth he calls the organic matrix yeah yeah and that was inverted uh -huh. um to, to create the distortion oh right um and uh, to me it's not like they did this to the mm, planet mm, mm -hmm. it's It's really hard to put this into words but i'm kind of with you that already i think <laughs> yeah that it that it happened to the planet mm. but it's not an as in, as in them it was what was needed to happen to the planet for our growth mm -hmm. and for her growth so that on some level there was agreement 
for me it, it's not that it was it was done to mm. us and to the planet um and what franco says is that the moon merely reflects so the inverted matrix was reflected back to us through the moon and so when a lot of us felt a lot of emotions my feeling is is through that as well that the moon would reflect our emotions back to us it's not that the moon caused the emotions they're already inside us but would reflect them back to us um and Franco also says that the inver inverted matrix is now switched off. It's done. However, there are still remnants of that energy mm. and, and we're still mm. working through some of that energy. And to be honest, that really, that really resonates with me. And I find the energy of the moon way easier to deal with now than I ever have before. When I was living in Byron Bay, and the energy of Byron is very, very strong as well. So I think anything that's going on is just magnified as well. And the shadow, there's a lot of shadow energy in, in Byron. It's, it's, again, one of those strong energy places where bright light casts dark shadows. And I used to find the moon at that point really hard to deal with. Wow. And there was no escape from it because the only escape from it would be to leave the planet. Wherever you are on the planet, the moon's energy is going to be there. Even if you hide in the wardrobe, the energy is still going to be there. Um, and the last moon, especially, I, I, barely, I barely noticed the last full moon. Now, I'm not saying that that's how it's going to be from now on, but it, it was an observation that I made. I just thought that that was interesting. Yeah, any any feels on that? Oh wow, that's does that just, kind of that's, resonate? Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. I'm just taking a lot of that that in. Oh, so lovely to be with you. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, one th thought on the it's microcosm, macrocosm mm. was last year. You know, I'd I'd had this whole phobia against Antarctica. I didn't like that. Did couldn't. Um, and, and I decided, okay, let's just deal with this now. And um, I went back and uh, there, there's this whole structure uh, um, building in Antarctica and underneath the, the snow ice. And I saw myself on this kind of sort of table and being experimented on. And I'm like, oh no. And it was a really dreadful um but 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 where i was was i was in my higher soul aspect surrounded by my lemurian family and angel angelic ones um and or lots of other light beings but mostly it was my it was my lemurian and so i think it must have been very close to me coming out of lemuria and and I knew I had a choice to end that life. My soul had a choice. And I chose for that life to continue, which is this timeline, because I knew this timeline needed to continue mm -hmm. because we're, we're on an, uh, an awakening, we're on a journey. So however terrible that was, it meant that there's a higher purpose to it. So that's when you were talking about that, there's, there's all these other higher dimensional awarenesses and, and in the end, the light, all the, well, in the beginning was the dark. But <laughs> so I don't know, light, dark, the, 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 the highest um, um, intention wins, you know. So, and that kind of goes to how often I think, it goes back to my, what I was saying about the guides not telling us, because our humans will be very limited or our ego aspect is limited to what we think is good for us or what we want is where we're resonating at the time. Um, so that, that was, that was huge for me to get that um, experience that, that there is a purpose and it makes sense. And it's oh well that through all the struggling and the pain and the fear and the, whatever it is we can go through that, that yes, we have a choice, and 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 then there could be you know there's a higher um purpose to it mm. 
So it's not, it, I think we're finding the complexities that has um, a purity to it. So it's not the complexity of the, of the inverted matrix, which is full of drama and story and mm -hmm. knots and entanglements and codependence mm -hmm. and, and all the other. Or, or, it's the interlink in how everything's interlinked and yeah. um so um yeah i'm still sort of sitting with what you say what you said there um um i've i've for, for i i don't know for many many years i've resisted listening to anything about conspiracy theory or anything mm. but but I go with my own experience or I go with who I work with and what they bring. Um, yeah. And um, even at a session today with somebody, it's like, you had something put in you that, that made you do that. And I, cause I had a, uh, um, in the past, I've had something put in my, uh, it's like a stake, a, a energetic in my heart chakra. And I saw it there and I took it out. And I, there was a lot of, I did a lot of swearing cause I was so effed off. I'm like, and I saw the demon energy behind it and the priest pretending to be and all that, it's all that rubbish. Um, and it was such a relief to go like, and it, they tried to stop me being me. Well, mm. they didn't manage it. <laughs> but, uh, and, so for, and I've released a lot of entities and beings around people um, over the years, but this, um, so when I felt it in this other person, I was just like, fuck's sake, get the right, the fight. <laughs> <Just like, laughs> They were like, no, no, carry on, that's fine. <laughs> I was like farting for them, I think. Like, how they put that in you? Fuck. <laughs> you know, that's what I had to swear. I was like, really? God. Uh, <laughs> more than I, more. I could, um, oh, uh, we removed it. I removed it. Like, get that, get, you know, because he'd been feeling it. I'm like, no. <laughs> um, not in a kind of get all dense, you know, and like, oh, I'm swearing. But sometimes, you know, you just like, no, you know, that's not on. <laughs> I won't carry on swearing, but um, <laughs> so I think we're being we're seeing all it now. We're not having to get um all seduced by it. Like I've seen over the years, people get like all like, oh, you know, I've got demons and I've got attachments, and it's all very seductive. I'm not, I'm I'm I just get I'll get fuck off. I just <laughs> <laughs> just get out of the way and let's get on with the fun stuff. Um <laughs> yes. That, yes <laughs> that's what that's always been my um <clears throat> my approach to to all of mm. that not i call it nonsense it's like but um but yeah i think um i think that's where i feel we're, we're at it's like okay we're, we're we're so many pieces are still slotting in and, and yeah and we're getting more empowered to go you know what that's just not on Mm. Yeah. Get, yeah get all your interference out the way a bit like <laughs> um uh, if you want to join us in, the, uh, in a lighter vibration you're well invited <laughs> as well <laughs> i always like go if you want to you know but yeah. if you want to stay where you are vibrating just go away um I'm not you know my feeling is and i can't remember i th i have a feeling somebody said this this to me as well um, and I, <clears throat> I can't give credit to that person because I can't think who it, who it was, oh. but it may have even been you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that a lot of the, <clears throat> let's say the heavier energy um, is kind of done with being the heavy energy now as well. Yeah. And it's almost <laughs> a bit of a relief. It's like, you know, the check in the watch is like, oh, are we nearly done yet? I'd quite like to go to the light, really. You know, I'm a, I'm a little bit done with with all this, <laughs> all this rah and scaring people, and you know, yeah, all, yeah, yeah, all the rest of it. But but they're kind of done because my feeling is that we've we've all danced in the dark and we've all danced in the light. And those of us that are dancing in the light in this lifetime might like to think that we've never danced in the dark, but of course we have. Oh, um, and often people will volunteer to do that, which is a really honorable thing to do because we need that person in our life with that shadow stuff with that heavier energy for us to grow in whatever ways it is that we're going to grow and that's you know that's quite that's a really honorable thing to do 
Um, but it can't be it can't be an easy road to take. You know, in in some ways, that's a harder road to take than dancing in the light, as well. Um, but my feeling is that we've <clears throat> we've all done all of it, and the energy in our polarized reality at the moment may well be kind of done with that and, and quite relieved oh. to be offered the opportunity to go to the light. Mm. Yeah, yeah, very powerful. Yes, and and um, and it's a beautiful, that's a beautiful way of framing, experiencing, moving beyond the um, blaming, shaming, polarization of, um, sorry, just something Gemma suddenly got... <laughs> Oh dear, <laughs> she's all alert. Um, of 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 density or dense experiences or you know judgments mm -hmm. of um, certainly you know I I chose a very challenging um, childhood. Uh, it was jam packed full of stuff, um, and I'm still having to work with that in my system. Yeah. And I, I think only this week did it's like, well, I um accepted that. It's like it's gonna take a while. <laughs> uh, I was born into a, 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 a woman, a, a mother, who had nervous breakdowns, electric shock treatments, um, almost killed by my father. I won't go into it all the way because it's it might be a list. Um, but you know, I was born into that's the womb that I chose. Um, and it can feel hard. Her life was tragic until the end. Ter terrible um, um, dying of cancer. That it was terrible. So just that, you know, um, um, let alone my father. And, 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 and I can give myself such a hard time with, um, what, you know, why am I not done with this? And or, or sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be carrying the rage. And I'm like, where the hell has this come from? Um, God, I thought I'd done with that. Um, it all just, I'm like, wow, it has uh, a lot of force. I don't get it very often, but um, um, so, but it's given me so much insight. Yeah given me so many gifts um because along with that i i was very awake as a child mm. so um um so it feels like humbling you know it's like well that's a gift <laughs> it at times not felt like it mm. um i've certainly been in places of like, envy why can i why why <laughs> why why <laughs> Lots of whys, um, um, but I think so. Coming to be gentle with, you know, that your lovely heart meditation at the beginning is like we're all different, we're all unique. We're, there's all a higher purpose to everything, and mm. and it's taken me. It's softening. Yeah, that's that's what I feel. I'm learning to be compassionate for myself mm. and therefore others. Um. And certainly I've experienced being with violence. Um, my, you know, my, I, my father was an incredibly violent man. And because of that, that rage I will feel in me, thank God, not very often, but, and it, 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 it is, is um, I understand it. Mm. I certainly understand it because it feels powerful. Um, it's addictive. Mm. Um, um, and it, it, it obliterates everything <laughs> mm. in it, in its wake. Um, but there's something really seductive about that. Um, so it's enabled me to understand what a lot of people get stuck in. Yeah. The humans, um, that's precious. Mm. It seems some funny thing to say, but it 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 gives so it means um, who 
whoever might now they don't walk in the dawn i do it mostly on, online but it means if somebody sits in front of me, i'm like oh yeah okay oh, oh, yeah, i can feel it. <laughs> i know that <laughs> um <laughs> i can feel that i know that mm. i've been everywhere <laughs> not this lifetime i've been places and in my other incarnations which i remember and remembering more and more of us are i'm like wow yeah um we're not like you say we're not victim like Gaia wasn't victim yeah. if we if we're saying we were awakening and we had choice therefore didn't Gaia there's so I think you're the first person I've heard I haven't because I don't read a lot at the moment now I can't seem to be able to take in a lot of information because there's all this other information coming in um that mostly I've heard oh what well, this was this was done to Gaia or this you know, Gaia, poor Gaia, and yeah, I mean, we're doing a lot to Gaia. I mean, that pisses me off. But um, um, but yes, there's a higher, there's a higher purpose to everything that mm. um, just yeah. Know. And I I don't see her as a as a victim. I I see her as an empowered, an empowered being. <clears throat> who yeah who has chosen her path and her children you know I, I see us as her children and I feel that that yeah, is yeah. how she looks on us it's yeah. like you know you don't stop loving your child if your child does something stupid because it doesn't know any better right you know <laughs> and I, I feel it's the same it's the same kind of energy and what you were saying before is as well the planet has been in a very dark place. Mm. Sometimes I think it's hard to imagine that it's darker, that it was darker than it is now, but it has been. It's been truly, yeah. truly dark because there's been a lot of um, unconsciousness and now we're becoming more conscious. So, you know, like your father and like the people who have gone before that see red and that expression is, is very, very apt. It's kind of like phew, the red mist is there. And you can't properly see through that red mist. No. You're just surrounded by it. And to me, it's only relatively recently that we've, we've used expressions like expression of our anger or channeling that anger in a positive way. Like, you know, we didn't know how to do that. We just had anger and didn't know what to do with it. So then you do something with it and create a pathway which... And then if you do it again, you're, you're deepening that, that pathway. Right. Mm -hmm. But if it's that people become violent or aggressive either with them, because sometimes it can implode on ourselves as well. Um, and I don't know which is, which is more damaging, really, externalizing it or internalizing it. Yeah. But it's really only in our lifetimes that we've, we've, we're starting to learn that there are different ways of the anger is just an emotion. It, it's yeah. not good or bad. It just is. There's a density to it. There's a there's a heaviness to it. There are certain emotions that hold this denser energy. But at the end of the day, they are just emotions, and it's what we do we do with them that that counts. Um, I'm feeling to just mention something that. So some dear friends and I connect on a messenger thread and we do a lot of unraveling and a lot of weaving. It's like we unravel the distortion and we're weaving new codes in. And we were talking the other day about the petals of the heart, almost like a, like a lotus. And the outer petals may well be those, those emotions that we consider negative, but actually oh. they don't really hold a polarity as such, they just are. So things like guilt, shame, anger. And it, it's, it's like in order, we have to light up all the petals, hatred as well. And I've been feeling a lot of emotions that I, I haven't really felt for a long time. Um, you know, the rage, hatred, all, all those kinds of things. And it's like, ah, and I can observe them. But it's like we're lighting up those petals that are around the outside and working our way into the middle and the purer, the purer, but they're all emotions of the heart. 
you know, forgiveness, love, compassion, we, we, we associate those with the heart. But my feeling is that it's actually all of them, but the distorted ones perhaps around the outside of the flower, but we have to feel those as well yeah, yeah. and light those up mm-hmm. on our way to getting to that, that mm-hmm. real purity, that real love mm-hmm. that's in the center. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is just a beautiful image and could definitely work with that to, mm. to embrace when we're in um, feeling like my, feeling overwhelmed or we're really in, in an, an emotional current because yeah. they are just resonance and currents. And yeah. um, for me, uh, you know, the, 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 yeah, anger, um, I've not allowed, I didn't allow myself to feel angry because I thought anger was violence. Yeah. Um, but uh, sometimes we need to say, no, that's mm. not, that's not okay. Like the mother would protect the child, go, no, don't do that. Yeah. Um, or, or if the child doesn't listen again, like, no, um, because that's protection, you know, don't, you know. <laughs> um, uh, so if you just allow it to go through and, and I, and I, that's the other, you know, I've, I've allowed myself to observe the rage come up yeah, and then to then be released and not be, um, held in my body and in my system anymore. And then I've been feeling anger of well, that was not okay. And it's, I've been able to feel that because I'm not attaching myself to that story yes it wasn't okay because i i even there's a we're going at as we um because amanda lawrence per, lovely amanda had uh, well with her lovely diagrams but um as we uh raise our vibration we then uh, revisit these wounds or these patterns um and then see a see a, a hot from a higher dimensional um yes vibration the meanings, learnings, knowledge, wisdom, understanding of, it's like a spiral that's sort of just going up and up and up and up and up. You're still working with it. So, um, so I, I certainly done a lot of work on this. It's like, oh, I'm revisiting, but it it goes, it gets cleared much quicker, quicker, quicker. Um, So now it's, so it's seeing, allowing that energy to, to, yeah, to be embraced, compassionately be part be the petals in in the, mm. in the of, of the heart um so it doesn't get distorted and then be in the in the, the way the matrix is mm. inverted and then become violence it's only because yeah. it's not being allowed to something's not being allowed to it be expressed and held mm. compassionately so yeah that's um yeah and when it's suppressed when it when we're trying to like keep a lid on it as well that that's when it kind of like resists that so in, instead of expressing it and allowing it, it it's kind of like pushed down I mean I certainly in my experience it's the pushing down that's the problem yeah but the pushing down keeps telling me that the emotion is a problem and I keep revisiting that every I might like, freaking nearly every day the emotion is not the problem <laughs> Um, the same with fear. It's like, I come have, cause I have a lot of it in my system because I was born in a, my mum who had a lot of trauma and then yeah. had it all, you know, I don't know what they did to her brain to kind of, I mean, she was never p- fully present as a uh, terrible. So I'll hold on to the fear. <laughs> mm. I'm like, you can relax. <laughs> so that's been, I did that a few weeks. I don't know, a month or two months. Like, Every time there's been a like the fear resonance come up, I say relax, mm. and and it's it's been extraordinary to have be peaceful and feel the fear, and then of course the fear goes. But <laughs> my intention is to kind of I'm realizing I'm holding on to the fear. I mean, the fear does want to hold on, but um, but it's I realize that's the programming. The program saying you know don't look at this, and and I'm not I've. And I'm not consciously saying that, but the programming mm. is so subtle. It goes yeah. down to pre-verbal, cellular, um, and how Matt Cohen was said in his recent video, which I put on my feed, Facebook page. Mm-hmm. It's, um, you know, we, we, we're plugged into the kind of 
collect it was well Jung would call it collective unconscious you know the thoughts the programming um so yes anyway so that's um but yeah wow that's we didn't know we were going there today did we <laughs> no. well i suppose we took with the moon isn't it there's a like you know it's full moon um the whole associations with going crazy and mm. there's that phrase um um losing your head and i like i've been like um shifting that for quite a while it's like well it, that's a good mm. thing just yeah. get out of your head <laughs> <laughs> but there's this whole fear of <gasps> you know what if you lose your mind mm. you know um i think that's programming <laughs> um yeah true so I go, well, let's, you know, the whole thing would be empty, emptying the mind to then, because you empty the mind, you're still, you're still there. If you're not right, if you're, you know, doing the meditative mindfulness or whatever, however you mm -hmm. want to, you empty the, or, or you drop into the hearts. Yeah. There's no thoughts, but you're really awake. Um. Yeah, so you 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 so yeah, I I find it, and it's very much like the fool card, you know. Be don't be foolish, and but yet that in the tarot, the fool card is zero. Yeah, I mean, all, <laughs> the signs are out there <laughs> um, already, um, and even common phrases we we like you say about uh, red rage. Mm. Um, so yeah, so the so lunar lunatic lunar moon um and there's a lot of programming like oh well, it's full moon um or oh, things are gonna you know i won't be able to sleep is is that a bad thing i suppose it is if we're working nine to five which is the system mm. <laughs> you get what you'd be tired but a bit like you know um when there's a woman menstruating so they're not there as um to be a bother although it can be if we're not in flow with it then it all yeah. starts becoming a pain literally um but if we're working with these energies <clears throat> and and flow with them then they're not and like there's a whole thing about mercury retrograde i think i'm the i don't know i don't know anybody else i'm like if we say we have a choice about how we feel and think and experience and we create our reality with ourselves and then ex then that's reflected externally mm -hmm. you were talking about the moon reflecting the, us yeah. back um mercury um is not bad and then there's mercury retrograde and then everyone goes oh things are all gonna go wrong it's like well if everyone's gonna say it's gonna go wrong <laughs> then it's gonna go wrong isn't it <laughs> I'm just like, but yeah then let's I thought, change the program yeah exactly and i'm like <laughs> maybe because i don't um astrology doesn't fix in my brain i'm like well what is people going on about mercury retrograde again um and i'm like well maybe we all should just shut up <laughs> not in a rude way but just to listen maybe it's not maybe mercury retrograde isn't a negative thing maybe it's trying to say to us to shut up to be quiet so we can listen mm. so it's an opportunity rather than a curse so if we I don't see why <laughs> if we say we can we it's how we we frame our own inner reality then we're doing we aren't we programming the external by saying oh mercury retrograde oh god um, <laughs> um uh, so I'm a bit like mm, I'm not sure about that <laughs> maybe if we could all like go mercury retrograde right everyone just stop <laughs> have a Sunday day have a day of just being still um, maybe that's what Mercury wants us to do. Um, mm. And we're trying to force through it. It's like, no, I must send my emails. <laughs> um, maybe it's a system that's, uh, I don't know. Anyway, I'll stop now. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of the planets and the astral bodies out there, um, So as our solar system is traveling through the galaxy and it's being bombarded with these energies, 
um, these strong energies are causing shifts, causing shifts in us, causing shifts in the earth, causing shifts in all the planets. And interestingly, I'll just mention this by the by, but all the planets are heating up. Global warming is happening to all of the planets as, as we go through the part of the universe that, we, that we're moving through, that the solar system is moving through. So to me, it's not just Earth that's going through her changes, it's everything. So the sun, and, and we've, we've touched on this before, that the sun is going through its evolution and the moon will be going through its evolution. And we don't often really hear the moon that there'll be kind of new Earth, but I don't see that as being separate, um, but that there will be new moon as mm, well, yeah, a yeah. new sun. Yeah. Um, so this is this is linked as well to our call on Monday. So I'm going to I'm going to read out what we what we wrote for it because I won't remember it otherwise because it's quite detailed. So so this March full moon will be the closest to Gaia in 2020, and it's calling in new beginnings of spring and the galactic timeline New Earth. We're moving into awakening the dream and the moon is assisting us in that. Like the sun, the moon aligns with all the other moons in all universes, galaxies and dimensions. And as such is a library of light codes. Its records are now ready to be accessed as our collective heart space energy awakens. It's time to align our hearts to the third eye dreaming and visioning frequency of the moon to support new earth visioning. The moon is linked to our throat and sacral centers, to the waters of our planet, our inner waters, and the waters of the womb, the Holy Grail. New galactic water codes are being released now for Gaia, linking with the divine feminine energies of the Hathors, Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary and Sophia codes and frequencies. The moon resonates with Sedna goddess who birthed all life in the ocean of life and the celestial cosmic song of whale. Through sounding and the language of light, that which was hidden is now being remembered, released and reclaimed. So join us in, in accessing these codes and frequencies through our sharing of light language and sound. And we'll be transmitting and receiving galactic moon upgrades to our physical vessels and through us to Gaia. So this is something that, that we're doing on Monday and the start of the call will be the same time that we started this one, so 7 p.m. GMT. There is an exchange for this one and it's 22 pounds and to, ah, 22 pounds and 22 pence, which is the equivalent approximately of $28.88, 88 pence. Um, but we would say with this as well, that if you're not in a position to make this exchange, but this is really calling you, please get in touch with either myself or Zahara. Um, because we don't want to exclude anybody from this. Um, so, yeah, give, give one of us a message. Um, and we've created a little Facebook page for it, and the Zoom link is in the Facebook page as well. So once the exchange has been made or not, you'll be invited to the Facebook page. Um, so that's what we are planning to do on Monday. And it feels really... It does feel really powerful. Um, and I feel we've both got some codes to share kind of now-ish in regards to that. But I just wondered if there's anything you wanted to add about the call on Monday before or anything else before we before we do that. No. <laughs> I think we we know. Um, yeah, I think we uh, other than um, yeah, the, the moon being hidden like the divine feminine, 
and the moons aligning with all the moons. We talk about the suns and all the suns. Yeah. Um, and the moon isn't stuck. The moon follows the earth. So it appears as if it's always stuck, but it's not. So it, has a, it, it moves in a unique way, yeah. um, which I think shows, says a lot about us individually. Um, and in past um, beliefs, spiritual beliefs, the moon was linked to the human soul that reflects the sun. Um, so, yes, um, because we're uncovering so much and um, I, I'm not sure what's going to happen on Monday because the moon, I'm waiting for the moon to shine. Um, but yes, that's, that's it really. Um, I feel in part as well that, um, how can I put this into words, that, that what we're doing on Monday, it's activating us with the moon energies, but I feel there's a reciprocation as well in the same way that the light language has been creating new earth templates for the new that the physical energy starts physic the physical aspect starts with the energy the energy comes first and the physical grows from that for want of a better yeah, way of putting yeah, it yeah yeah um that what we'll be doing as well is also creating new moon templates so it's it's in part activating those templates on on the moon as well oh, i just had a, this is like a bit <laughs> Um, cause everything's always synchronized, but something is, um, I had a session with somebody, uh, was it last week or week before, and she's going to go to the South of France and she's always going to, I think it's called, it's not Bert Bacharach, but it's, it sounds a bit like Bacharach. <laughs> um, um, the mount, a mountain in South of France that's upside down. They don't know how it actually physically in the 3Ds. Um, scientists have gone there. <laughs> you know, it's not like uh, woo-woo land. It is the top is inverted, um, and and I just for some reason that felt important to bring in. Um, there's a lot of um, extraterrestrial. It would have gone ET. We're now we're calling galactic um, experiences. People seeing all sorts there. There's Mary Magdalene connection there it's very hard to get to it's right out in the country it is possible but it's like there's only got a few houses there but there's something about you talking about the matrix inverted mm -hmm. and there's this one mountain um and i, I want to get there basically <laughs> when i heard about it i'm like i gotta get there um yeah so um because i feel that mountain has got a lot of connections with uh, what we've been talking about. And if anybody's watching this who knows any more information about this or has been, do, do communicate. <laughs> um, but um, I've been meaning to tell you about it, Denise, so I, um, mm. because um, it, it, uh, I've, I've obviously worked with a mountain um, in Wales a lot, Kadir Idris, yeah. and not a lot of people, I keep talking about it, but not a lot, it's not very well known, but it's like one of the most powerful mountains on Gaia. And it's interesting, I get drawn to not the most known because things are being revealed now. But there is something about that mountain and um, things that have been inverted and, <laughs> you know, that Gaia, that mountain chose to be inverted. Um, so, yes. So we have a spelling of that from Damien Nola. Um, <laughs> thank you, Damien. You so B-E-R-G-A, it. it is very similar to what you're saying. <laughs> um, B-E-R-G-A-R-A-C-H, so Bergerac. Bergerac, right. I may have, I may have just butchered the printer. It, I, <laughs> it's French, so I don't know. You yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah yeah interesting mm -hmm. and I got when you um oh <laughs> Damien also said oh 
been there many times. Oh, <laughs> Uber Lush. Um, oh wow, pick a good brains then. Ah, uh, okay. So it's it's spelt Bergerac, but it's more. I'm going to try and do my French accent now. <laughs> Bergerac. Bergerac. I can't do it, but that might be <laughs> wow. something along the line. So good. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. And for those that don't know, there is a connection between We Too and Damien as well, because the three of us were part of a 22-ish strong team of co-facilitators, um, co-hosts, facil co-facilitators, <laughs> whatever we were, we were all, <laughs> we were all doing our thing, doing our thing at the Voices of the Light Tribe last year. So, In Glastonbury. Yeah. Interesting. <clears throat> oh, we're on 22 people. Oh, wow. <laughs> We were at one point before, and I, I can't remember what point now it was in the conversation, but I kind of went, oh, 22. Um, yeah. <sighs> do you feel you have some codes to share? Yeah, let's do that. Actually, just before you do, when, when you first mentioned that mountain, um, I felt quite, I felt a lot of emotion relating to that and I could feel so much extra energy coming through as well almost like the mountain was was trying to get in and, and speak yeah 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 <sighs> would you like to um would you like to begin yeah I can do <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So taking a deep breath. Is it a Yeah, 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 yeah
Dragons, we didn't mention dragons, the dragons and the dragons are here. Erotokunsta <laughs> Ana me kille kere la kere kere la mana kere la pana na kudu hula kia ro tu 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 ta ta ta. Hele bara la na na me kia lu ta ro ro tu kust. Hele bara tu kote kere la na me kere la kote udu la pana te te tu tu ro ta ta. Ana e ya na ya hu hele ya hu. Oh, 
kulare stor da 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 dor ti karit i kampa anto kulna para da da naka hele yara to kunu muli yara ti kia da 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 to ya ana mai kia lu i ta ya to ya da 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 at are ele pe kulna kuria da 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 do para te ke to kulna ke to ada da to ton ama ke le hiam pala anu kust erat ira to kumala la Erat e a kadaro to to e a nama ki ti 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 ra. A le a ra to no ku le a ra to 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 e shta ra to to. A me ke he le a ra to a kaut o to to a ra to a karato o na me ke e shta. A han ne hat o rat a rat o na. A na me ke le i hart o na ka a shta a rat o na ta 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 ta. So just feeling yourselves, um, yeah, taking some deep breaths. If your eyes are closed, opening them whenever you wish. And taking some fluids, perhaps. The reason I giggled at the end there, <laughs> Someone recently um, posted <laughs> the first episode of The Clan Gigs. <laughs> <laughs> and I was suddenly taken back to it. <laughs> and it just, what was coming out just really reminded me of The Clan Gigs. Mm. For those of you that don't know and aren't of the age group or the nationality to remember The Clan Gigs, um, maybe I'll put the first episode in. <laughs> in the um in the comments and i'm also going to put the event that we're hosting on monday in the comments as well um but the clangers was a delightful children's program um from the 60s and the clangers were these knitted little um beautiful extraterrestrials that lived on the clanger planet that might have had a name but there was also the soup dragon and it was in the first episode the soup dragon was introduced as well and i had a puppet of the soup dragon or I think it was my sister's and it got passed on to me and it was like a wooden a wooden puppet and the, the wings flapped and the heads went from side to side and the legs just dangled but that was my first connection with a dragon um so it's, it's it holds really quite fond memories for me wow. um but yeah Klang is speaking light language <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow <laughs> <clears throat> you think because in my child's mind I thought they lived on the moon oh the maybe they did no actually I think it was it was a moon oh that's a moon. Oh. that's really interesting that you bring that up because it very much looked like a moon um but I think in the beginning it shows that it was like far away from earth but I, I right. could be wrong <laughs> just have to go back and have a look <laughs> But it certainly looked like a moon and they would go into the craters yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. And the yeah. soup dragon lived in one of the craters. Who would have yeah. thought we'd have been talking about the clangers tonight? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't know how that came to me. I suddenly remembered and I didn't, yeah, and, um, wow. And I hadn't watched it for, what am I, 52 now. So <laughs> uh, 40 something <laughs> years. And I went on YouTube and there it was. I'm like, wow. <laughs> oh. So I'm just looking at the, um, <clears throat> Damien said that they lived in craters on their hollow planet. Oh, Damien is a font of all knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you Damien. <laughs> I'm glad that you're an expert on the Quangas as well. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah um, I'm definitely going to post the YouTube of the first yeah. Quangas because it was awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, so thank you everyone that's that's joined us. Yeah, thank you. Janine is, is with us. <laughs> of course I come in at one hour seventeen minutes in FFS. <laughs> oh, oh dear. <laughs> so the recording of this will be you'll accessible at some point. <laughs> 
Well, we're live on Facebook, so the recording right. is... Oh, it'll be... Okay, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I never shared it to your page, actually, but you were you were tagged in it, so it should it should be on your on Oh, your it page. should... Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, yeah, for me, that's been a really interesting call, so yeah. I do recommend to anyone who's just joined us <laughs> if you get a chance... <laughs> Yeah, we went all over the place, didn't we? Some, yeah, you, you had some amazing um, insights. We both had amazing insights. <laughs> well, yours seems more interesting to, for me because I'm always, it's, I'm aware of, well, some of what I'm aware of, but yeah, wow. And yours seemed more interesting to me. <laughs> and that's why we're all so different. <laughs> Same but different. Yeah. We're all different, but we're all one. Yeah. I don't really want to end the call. I know. <laughs> oh. <sighs> wow. Okay. Well. You, do you the know the heart again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Good idea. Actually, I don't normally end with it, but um, maybe I shall. Ah, okay. And this is especially for those of you who missed this at the beginning. So taking some long and slow deep breaths, breathing in love, breathing out love, and bringing your awareness to your heart space in the center of your chest. And feeling that beautiful heart connection. The heart connection between Zahara and myself and all of you watching live, all of you watching on the replay and all of you watching on YouTube. Feeling that heart, heart to heart connection with Gaia, with the sun, with source creator and with the moon. And feeling the expansion of your heart energy. And I invite you, if you feel comfortable and if you're in a place to do so, to say to your beautiful heart, I love you. 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 Knowing that the energy from that will resonate out to all hearts on the planet. To all hearts in the universe. Across all dimensions of space and time. So taking a few long and slow deep breaths, <clears throat> beginning to move your body, roll your shoulders, wiggle your fingers and toes, opening your eyes when you're ready. <sighs> and if anybody does wish to join us on Monday, it would be amazing to see you. Um, it is a Zoom call and I will post the event um, in the comments. Thank you to everyone that's joined us. Oh, we're back on 22. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to everyone who's watching on the replay and who watches us on YouTube. From my heart to yours, much, much love. From Love Speaks Love, we will see you next time. Oops.